Today, on the 25th day of December, when ages beyond number had run their course from the creation of the world, when God in the beginning created heaven and earth, and formed man and woman in his own likeness, when century upon century had passed, since the Almighty set his rainbow in the clouds after the great flood, as a sign of covenant and peace. In the 21st century since Abraham, our father in faith, came out of the Ur of the Chaldees. In the 13th century since the people of Israel were led by Moses in the exodus from Egypt. Around the thousandth year since David was anointed king. In the 65th week of the prophecy of Daniel, in the 194th Olympiad, in the year 752, since the foundation of the city of Rome, in the 42nd year of the reign of Caesar Octavian Augustus, the whole world being at peace, Jesus Christ, eternal God and Son of the Eternal Father, desiring to consecrate the world by his most loving presence, was conceived by the Holy Spirit, and when nine months had passed since his conception, was born of the Virgin Mary in Bethlehem of Judah, and was made man. The Nativity of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to the flesh. And from 
gather this morning, I certainly want to begin by wishing everyone a very happy, a very holy and Merry Christmas. Uh, so good to see uh, so many out on this kind of chilly night out there. <laughs> um, you know, the, the crowd that we had at four o'clock, we were wondering if there'd be more than Father Andy, myself, and the, the choir. <laughs> so, but how good it is to have so many turn out and what a what a beautiful celebration we gather for as we come together to once again celebrate the feast, the nativity, the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so as we gather in this beautiful space on this beautiful night, we be in our prayer in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. Amen. And as we begin, we pause to thank God for his gifts and blessings, certainly most especially for the gift of his son. We ask forgiveness from our sins. We ask God's help preparing our hearts and minds to celebrate these most sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Jesus, you come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to life everlasting. sacred night, radiant with the splendor of the true light. Grant, we pray, that we who have known the mysteries of his light on earth may also delight in his gladness in heaven, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen.
reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Upon those who dwelt in the land of gloom, a light has shone. You have brought them abundant joy and great rejoicing, as they rejoice before you as at the harvest, as people make merry when dividing spoils. For the yoke that burdened them, the pole on their shoulder and the rod of their taskmaster, you have smashed as on the day of Midian. For every boot that trampled in battle, every cloak rolled in blood will be burned as fuel for the flames. For a child is born to us, a son is given us, upon his shoulder dominion rests. They name him Wonder Counselor, God Hero, Father Forever, Prince of Peace. His dominion is vast and forever peaceful. From David's throne and over his kingdom, which he confirms and sustains by judgment and justice, both now and forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord. Thanks. The grace of God has appeared, saving all and training us to reject godless ways and worldly desires and to live temperately, justly, and devoutly in this age as we await the blessed hope, the appearance of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to deliver us from all lawlessness and to cleanse for himself a people as his own eager to do what is good. 
The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that the whole world should be enrolled. This was the first enrollment when Quirinius was governor of Syria. So all went to be enrolled, each to his own town. And Joseph too went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David that is called Bethlehem because he was of the house and family of David, to be enrolled with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. While they were there, the time came for her to have her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. Now there were shepherds in that region living in the fields and keeping the night watch over their flock. The angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were struck with great fear. The angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I proclaim to you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For today in the city of David a Savior has been born for you, who is Christ and Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find an infant wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was a multitude of the heavenly host with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please remain standing for the blessing.
Please be seated. Once again, I certainly want to wish everyone a very happy and holy blessings filled Christmas and certainly welcome everyone out on this cold Christmas morning. Also want to extend a special welcome to those who have traveled to be with family and friends over the Christmas holidays. Today, as we gather, we come together to celebrate that great feast of Christmas. And although we don't celebrate a three-day triduum like we do at Easter, what we're about as we gather on this night is so great that it can't be confined to simply one set of readings as our regular Sunday readings are, Sunday celebrations are. At Christmas, the church gives us four separate sets of readings for four different times in Mass, the Mass can be celebrated, and the celebrant has the right to choose what readings to use. Now, I had thought of a Christmas present to read all four sets of readings and preach at length on each reading, but I decided not to, so Merry Christmas. <laughs> each of the sets of readings that the church gives us, gives us a taste of that hope and promise, that joy of Christmas, a love of our God that is so great that he sent his son into this world to suffer and die on the cross that we might have forgiveness from our sins, that we might be freed from sin and death. And as beautiful as each set of readings are, how much more beautiful if we really would take the time to read those four sets of readings, one after another, and just sit with them. Throughout all four, the first reading comes from the prophet Isaiah, where the prophet Isaiah foretells of that promise of our God to send a Messiah a savior in the line of David into the world to restore Israel, to restore Jerusalem and the holy temple where God dwells on earth. The Messiah who would restore that marital relationship between the Lord and his people. And all the Psalms for this Sunday, this Christmas day, sing the joy of this restoration. The Gospel for the first Mass of Christmas is from Matthew, and it gives the genealogy of Jesus, showing him to be the one in the line of that great King David. But it also prepares us for a new kind of a great king, a king who in fact is Son of God. The second Mass is the Gospel that we just listened to, where we hear that Mary and Joseph have to travel to Bethlehem, a city which ironically, literally translates, House of God. How appropriate that the, or House of Bread, rather, and how appropriate Jesus Emmanuel, the Bread of Life, should be born in the House of Bread, and laid in a manger. That same bread of life who will feed us a little later this day with the gift of the Eucharist. And by virtue of our baptism, the sacrament of reconciliation, we become that new temple, that new tabernacle. The Gospel for the Mass of Dawn picks up on the shepherds who the angels appeared to, and we hear that they go then to Bethlehem to see this thing that has taken place. It's not trumpet blasts and pageantry filled proclamations that announce the birth of the King of Kings, but lowly shepherds who are the first evangelists who go forth glorifying and praising God for the gift of his Son. 
And sadly, how much of this symbolism of the shepherds as that lowest of class, looked down upon by so many. In many places, they weren't thought to be reputable enough to, you know, to appear in, in court and give testimony. And yet it's these shepherds that our God entrusts with that role of proclaiming the birth of his Son, our Messiah. And there's another irony in regards to the shepherds that I think we completely lose sight of this night. As so many of the patriarchs of old, especially Jacob, Moses, were shepherds. And great King David was a young boy tending sheep when the Lord God called him and raised him to be shepherd of his people Israel. The gospel for the final mass of Christmas comes from John's prelude, which encapsulates our entire faith and meaning of life. And the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us, and we saw his glory, the glory of the Father's only Son, full of grace, and truth. Sadly, at times I wonder how often I, I wonder how often so many of us wander from the awe, the mystery, the gift of that first Christmas. There's a little poem that I'd like to share. It's entitled Mary's Dream, and it reads I had a dream, Joseph. I don't understand it, not really. But I think it was about a, a birthday celebration for our son. I think that was what it was all about. The people had been preparing for about six weeks. They had decorated the house and bought elaborate gifts. It was peculiar, though, because the presents weren't for our son. They wrapped them in beautiful paper and tied them with lovely bows and stacked them under a tree. Yes, a tree, Joseph, right in their house. They decorated the trees also. The branches were full of glowing balls and sparkling ornaments. There was a figure on top of the tree. It looked like an angel might look. Oh, it was beautiful. Everyone was laughing and happy. They were all excited about the gifts. They gave gifts to each other, Joseph, not to our son. I don't think they even knew him. They never mentioned his name. Doesn't it seem odd for people to go to all the trouble to celebrate someone's birthday if they don't know him? I had the strangest feeling that if our son had gone to this celebration, he would have been intruding. Everything was so beautiful, Joseph, and everyone was so full of cheer but it made me want to cry. How sad for Jesus not to be wanted at his own birthday celebration. I'm glad it was only a dream. How terrible, Joseph, if it had been real. My sisters and brothers, as we gather this Christmas morning, in a few moments we will come forward to this altar and we will be fed with the bread of life, with that body, that blood, soul, and divinity of Emmanuel, our God, is with us. After that, as we go forth to celebrate the Christmas season, I pray that we never forget to invite our Lord into the party. And as we share our gifts with our loved ones, let us not ever forget that greatest gift of all, the gift of Emmanuel. Our God is with us. And as we give gifts, let us give that only gift that we can give Jesus, 
the only one that he wants. The gift of our heart, the gift of our very self. My sisters and brothers, this night always, may our hearts be filled with the joy that we might join the psalmist in praise and the shepherds in adoration as we proclaim. Let the heavens be glad and earth rejoice. For today in the city of David, a savior has been born for us, who is Christ and Lord. May the hope, the joy, the light and the peace of this holy night be with you and yours this Christmas and always. My friends, Merry Christmas and God bless you. you to rise for a profession of faith and just one note on this feast of the incarnation when we would normally bow this night we kneel and so let us pray together I believe in one God the Father Almighty maker of heaven and earth of all things visible and invisible I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things are made. For us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate with the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and Son, who with the Father and Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Now, with faith and confidence, For the Holy Father and the bishops who assist him, that their life, teaching, preaching, and pastoral care will proclaim the saving truth of the Incarnation to all, we pray to the Lord. For our country and those who lead it, that true freedom and justice may reign, we pray to the Lord. For lasting peace throughout the world, that the coming of the Prince of Peace will put an end to all division and unify the peoples of the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord For families, that the graces of Christmas will draw family members together in lasting bonds of love. We pray to the Lord. Lord For the poor, the homeless, and the unemployed, and for refugees, that Jesus Christ, who came into the world as one who is poor, will love and rescue them. We pray to the Lord. For all Christians, that they may respond to the universal call to holiness by living their faith with great fervor, we pray to the Lord. Lord that the Holy Spirit will guide the preparations for the World Synod, we pray to the Lord. Lord for an end to the conflict between Russia and Ukraine and all the other conflicts around the world, we pray to the Lord. For the intention of this Mass, the spiritual and temporal welfare of cathedral parishioners, 
we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the prayers we now offer in silence. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Please join in our diocesan and vocations prayer. O oh God, we earnestly ask you to bless our diocese with many priests, brothers, sisters, and deacons who will love you with their whole mind and heart and gladly spend their entire lives serving, serving your church and making you known and loved. Bless our families, bless our children, and choose from our homes those needed for your work. Mary, Queen of the Clergy, pray for us. Pray for our priests, religious, and deacons. Obtain for us many more. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty and ever-living God, you are present with us in every moment of our lives. On this holy night, hear our prayers and answer them in the light of your great mercy. We ask this through the intercession of the Holy Family, Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May the oblation of this day's feast be pleasing to you, O Lord, we pray, that through this most holy exchange we may be found in the likeness of Christ, in whom our nature is united to you, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For in the mystery of the Word made flesh, a new light of your glory has shone upon the eyes of our mind, so that as we recognize in him God made visible, we may be caught up through him in love of things invisible. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy, unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace and guard, unite, and govern her through the whole world, through together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy minister, and with all who, holding and teaching, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember your servants who are unable to be here with us, and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves, and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls in hope of faith and well-being and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred night on which Blessed Mary, the Immaculate Virgin, brought forth the Savior of the world and in communion with those whose memory we venerate especially the glorious ever Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Cassaginus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damien, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers and all things, we are defended by your protecting help through Christ our Lord. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command what we be delivered from the eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen through Christ our Lord. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, 
our Lord Jesus. On the day before he suffered, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with our eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. As we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion and resurrection from the dead and glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, almighty God, Command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this, this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing through Christ our Lord. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, and Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Lord Jesus Christ, has said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter my mind, but always say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Grant us, we pray, O Lord our God, that we who are gladdened by participation in the feast of our Redeemer's Nativity may through an honorable way of life become worthy of union with him who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Before the final blessing, just once again, certainly want to extend my Christmas greeting to everyone. Certainly also want to thank everyone who has helped in any way to, to make our celebration of Christmas uh, here, the, the earlier Mass, the one tomorrow morning, the beautiful celebrations that they are, those who have helped in any way in the ministries, the, the Christmas elves that uh, showed up last Sunday afternoon to decorate the the church and, and make our beautiful cathedral even more beautiful. Uh, certainly, Father Andrew and his welcoming hospitality to me all the time. You know, certainly uh, appreciate that so much. And uh, without naming any other names, because when I do, I know I forget somebody and don't want to do that. So let's just show our thanks and appreciation to all of me. Certainly, Boyer and everybody. And after uh, saying that I'm not going to mention any other names, I am going to mention one. Certainly to welcome, uh, never know which side he's on. <laughs> to Deacon Dan Tracy, the member of Cathedral Parish here, uh, ordained a deacon last uh, May, will be ordained to the priesthood this coming May. So uh, Deacon Dan and his... Uh, He and his fellow uh, seminarians will be traveling this next week to Rome and to other parts of Italy. So we certainly uh, pray that your journeys be safe and joy-filled, Deacon. And, uh, you know, for take our best of wishes to, to the rest of those, you know, the others from our diocese, especially, that will be going with you. And, and again, know that you're in our thoughts and our prayers always. So thank you. Bow your heads now and pray for God's blessing. May the God of infinite goodness, who by the incarnation of his Son has driven darkness from the world and by that glorious birth has illumined this most holy night, drive far from you the dark of night, the dark of vice, and illumine your hearts with the light of virtue. Amen. Amen. May God who will that by the great joy of the Son's saving birth be announced by shepherds to shepherds by the angel, fill your minds with the gladness he gives and make you heralds of his gospel. Amen. Amen. And may God who by the incarnation brought together the earthly and heavenly realm, fill you with the gift of his peace and favor and make you shares with the church in heaven. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace.